<laughs> I'm gonna. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Wildy Garden. And in today's video, I've got a little helper. <laughs> This is Luna that one or two of you may have seen on the previous videos. She is a hyperactive Belgian Malinois, absolutely incredible dog, ridiculously uh, easy to train and very, very intelligent, but also uh, I think she runs on nitrous oxide or, well, she's certainly high octane, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, in this video, I want to just talk to you a little bit about herbaceous perennials and the best times in which you can prune them or which you should be pruning them because it's a great time of year now which is sorry something plastic let's just put that out of the way <laughs> apologies for any uh bit of background noise you might hear obviously shush come come good girl sit anyway yes so i just want to talk to you a bit about herbaceous perennials and the best time to prune them now it might not look like the most appealing backdrop because I'm actually sat in the greenhouse where I am stocking a load of our plants for upcoming landscaping projects and of course for the Wilder Garden online shop. So if you are looking to buy any kind of wildflower or pond plant, please visit the wildergarden.com website when of course, where of course you can get lots and lots of choices for your garden. Obviously there are pond plants which are coming onto the stock list soon, so please bear with us. I know a lot of you have been inquiring, inquiring about pond plants. And um, also a, a big thank you to all of you that have sent in photos. Uh, a little while back I asked all of you what you wanted to see more of on the channel and second place was ponds but equally i also asked you all to send in photos of the ponds that you've built off the back of the wild Your garden channel youtube channel and obviously the videos the instructional videos the three-part series in particular where i show you exactly how to build and make your own wildlife pond in your own back garden so thank you so much to you all that have emailed in so far if you've got any more pictures to send if you haven't heard about the previous request then do send them to hazelwoodlandscapes at hotmail.com i'll put a link below and of course a link in the description where you can forward those to because i will be making a montage of all the different ponds that you have sent me photos of and we are nearly at 100 now so i might have to cap it at 100 for now but that's incredible it means that for the best part of a hundred of you have sent in videos or pictures of the ponds that you've built from all around the world, which is just fantastic. So keep those coming, guys. I promise to uh, get those in a video to you before too much longer. Thank you, that's a sponge. <laughs> Tell you what, this dog's amazing at finding stuff I didn't know existed. So, well, I knew about sponges, obviously, but uh, I didn't know there's one in here. Anyway, um, without further ado, herbaceous perennials and the best time to prune them. Now. There's many, many different species that I plant or types of plant that I plant in my own gardens that I design and create. And of course, they are all designed to be good for wildlife. Now, there's many, many species, like I say, that you can choose from. And I will be doing a video very soon on uh, the best top five, if you like, plants that I think you could be planting in your border to attract wildlife. Now, generally speaking, the herbaceous borders that I create are usually uh, a mix of non-natives majority non-native but also some natives as well and they include things such as verbena bonariensis napita sedum salvias all those sorts of things so uh, some really good ones for wildlife obviously that's the main aim of the gardens that i design and create but i think the more important thing is when is the most important time to cut these back it doesn't matter necessarily what you have got in your herbaceous borders and as i say i will be covering more videos on what plants to plant and also an upcoming video i've got is about the best five plants you can put in your garden the best five wild wildflowers that you can be planting in your lawn or your meadow uh, to attract wildlife or shady areas as well so stay tuned to the channel for that but a few of the ones that i've got in the greenhouse today that i've been pruning are things such as this sedum this is a sedum spectabile autumn joy really really good as a 
uh, a late summer flowering herbaceous perennial. And when I say herbaceous perennial, I probably ought to explain that herbaceous perennial, herbaceous just means leafy, pretty much, you know, uh, whereas a shrub obviously is a more woody stem so that's why they are called shrubs as opposed to herbaceous perennials and perennial of course meaning that they come back year after year after year some of them are shorter lived than others some of them are two to three years some of them are a lot longer they might live four five six seven years before they die so uh, some really good choices out there as i say this is one of them and really the principle is very easy so i'm going to grab my trusty secateurs now these are, it's important to have sharp secateurs when you're doing this kind of work. These are Felcos, which are, are just worth their weight in gold. Uh, they're sort of 50, 60 quid, but they really are, I think, it's a while since I bought these, so don't vouch, don't, uh, don't take my word for it, but uh, they are absolutely fantastic. Felco, of course, not the only make on the market. I'm not sponsored by Felco, so um, I'm not advertising their brand. I'm just simply saying they are a really trusted brand, trusted brand that I use that are very, very good for this sort of thing. Of course, you know, you can use scissors and that sort of stuff if it's just smaller vegetation that you're cutting back. But of course, when you get thicker stems like this, you want something with a decent blade to it. And of course, it's important to keep them sharp so that you keep the cut very clean. You know, there's no point doing a really jagged cut um, because it can just, uh, it takes a while for the uh, a while for the herbaceous perennial to heal over if it's not a nice clean square cut so yes important to have a good set of secateurs so i'm just going to basically prune this one down now the reason we do this is because you can see all this vegetation is from last year these are the old flower heads and they obviously were a very good uh, source of nectar and pollen one when they were in flower for the bees in particular, things like Red Admiral as well, uh, really good for them in the late summer months. But of course now they're kind of in the way and they look a bit unsightly, um, not that I think that should be an issue. And time-wise to do this, you'll note it is now coming up for the end of March. I usually do this around the end of March and into April for a very good reason. And that's because things like this sedum, things like the verbena, uh, things like teasels, all that sort of stuff, I leave them all through the winter months because birds such as the goldfinches, siskins, um, chaffinches, greenfinches, they all love to eat seeds from a lot of these different plants. So a very good way of providing a natural source of food for birds through the winter months. So I know we are all tidy freaks in the UK. Well, not all, the majority of us, it's been kind of ingrained in us over the last few centuries to cut everything back as soon as it's finished flowering, which yes, you can do, but of course then you don't have all these lovely, for me, I think they're wonderful to have these kind of architectural seed heads through the winter months. It's something else to look at. And of course, as I say, it provides a vital food source. And not only that, it provides a lot of sort of shelter and overwintering potential. No, you can't eat those. <laughs> it provides a lot of shelter and overwintering potential, particularly if they are hollow stems uh, for things like ladybirds and different larvae and lots and lots of insects, spiders and things. So a really good way of providing extra habitat in your garden for overwintering insects. You know, as if we have like the insect hotels you can buy from the supermarkets, um, you know, you've got the, the canes and that, which obviously they do work for bees and other insects as well. But I think to provide natural sources of uh, hibernation for them is a very good thing. So all of that leads me to decide that I ought to be cutting these back in the spring. And that's what I do, have done for years, and it works very, very well. So enough with the talking, let's get on with the snipping. You can see the fresh growth already. I mean, I know these are in a big you know, 40 meter greenhouse. So <laughs> it's reasonably warm in here, even very early on in sort of February time. But you can see all the fresh vegetation wanting to get going in, in here. So um, simply put, this one has almost just a single leader, which you can probably just make out. So I'm just simply gonna cut that. Hope that the pot doesn't fall off. You can see there, uh, just cut it as low down as you can so that the dying and um, sort of decaying wood in the middle is less likely to attract disease and fungal infections and things so you can see i've cut it fairly low down um, almost to the ground level which is probably best um these have got a bit of soil on where i've been watering them but uh you can see that now completely different looking plant so not only the sedum i'm going to show you a couple of other examples now now my favorite non-native herbaceous perennial now if you've got verbenas in your garden 
you'll no doubt if you've left them well done hats off to you um if you've left them through the winter that is you'll no doubt have something that looks like this and again i'm just using these potted examples because it's a nice easy way to get the plants up to you guys and show you exactly what i'm doing now you can see this verbena is raring to go in this pot you can see the fresh i hold the older stem you can see the fresh green shoots here just whizzing away already that's nearly 18 inches tall and we're only sort of uh, <laughs> we're not even into april but the top of the stem looks like this and this is what i mean now you can actually see that one is still or just coming into flower so these things are incredible they flower from june till sort of october time but it's these old dead stems i don't think you'll mind me snapping that to show you uh you can see these old heads of the flowers from last year's growth are really good for insects um sorry for birds are good for insects when they're flowering of course but birds the goldfinches in particular love these so that's why i leave them over winter yes it looks a bit unsightly don't worry about what your neighbors say um however it's now time to cut these things back so i'm gonna do a bit of the same now i've identified already where the fresh green shoots are on this so in essence you can see this is an older stem this one here i'm going to cut that right down you want to aim to get it to what's called a node. I'm a bit closer to show you this. Um, and you can probably see. Where, so where a leaf comes out, that is usually a node. You can see just there. And there is actually a fresh bit of green underneath the dead leaf that's about to get going. You can see it again on this one. At the side, where the leaf was last year, there's a fresh bit of green raring to go. However, if you were to just simply leave these, because, and again, you can see there, you know, raring to go from the main stem. So this is last year's growth. But if you let them grow from this point, the, tr the, 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 the plant as a whole can become very top heavy. So in actual fact, you want to reduce that right back down to the ground, because as I've just shown you, you've got these lovely fresh shoots from this year. So that's what we want to encourage to grow. So I'm going to cut this down just above and you want to cut i'll show you this twice in essence you want to cut just above so where if i was cutting to here i'll take that out of the way you can see i've cut just above and the fresh growth is either side so if i take that side shoot off it's a bit easier to make that out you can see that's how i've done that but that's what you want to do at the base so if you've got fresh growth coming out from the sides cut just above it reason being if you leave a little two inch stub it's just going to die back and you've got potential for disease or rot set in so i'm going to take this down now to where it should be just above a node in the bottom snip that off and i'm going to go around now and just do that with the rest of them that clanging noise is actually because i've got my phone balanced on a set of ladders <laughs> not got my tripod with me so again you can reduce the weight first you know with stuff like this and then you can actually take the main stems down so if i cut off the worst of the older vegetation you can start to see what we're looking at a bit better so you can see this is the older stem and again you know it's got plenty of growth coming off the side of it just there but um, I tend to find these go a lot better if you cut the old stems down and it just encourages lots of fresh growth, creates a lot healthier plant. So again, quite low down with that. Don't worry with this stuff, it does come back very easily. And then it's just a case of removing any old sort of smaller stems. The older leaves and things you can just pull out by hand, you just don't want to encourage, as I say, little leaf moulds and things on old leaves. That's an older stem as well there, so I'm going to cut that back just above the node. That's why it's important as well to have sharp secateurs because it just helps with the pruning process now. And that's what this thing looks like when it's in flower, by the way. Absolutely fantastic. About 17 or 18 species of butterfly I've recorded nectaring on this plant. My absolute all-time favourite. But look at that. Fresh, lovely, bushy, viable plant now from what was a rather overgrown scraggly specimen. I've got about 40 or 50 of these to go through over there after this. So uh, yeah, I can't hang about too long for it. But anyway, so that's a verbena. I've done the sedum. I just want to show you another common one that I do plant a lot of in my gardens that I create. And that is this, 
wonderful Napita, which is a Six Hills Giant. Absolute B magnet, really, really is. But um, it's it's quite, as you can see, scraggly from last year's growth. And, you know, it's provided a little bit of winter, overwintering habitat. But now we need to get that out of the way so we can let these wonderful little fresh shoots come up. And all I'm going to do is basically the same. So with these, it's just a case of getting in and getting down and cutting them back as low to the new growth as you can. And that will, as I say, just encourage. The same with anything, you know, if you've got old scraggly shrubs, things such as dog rose, um, you know, we're kind of getting a little bit late now, but you can probably still get away with it. If you're cutting, you know, shrubs like that back, you can probably still coppice a lot of them, which is almost like what we're doing here. We're coppicing these uh, plants on a small scale. <laughs> so, you know, we are taking them back down to the ground and that always encourages fresh growth, not with all plants, as I say, but you can't beat a good old hardy native shrub and wildflower because they are built tough for our mostly rubbish clay soils, limestone chalk, and they are very good obviously at growing back. But these things take a little bit more care, although they are pretty tough. These herbaceous perennials, again, this is not a native, this is Napita Six Hills Giant and an absolute bee magnet, as I say, but they just need a little bit of care once a year. And that's all this is. It's one cut back a year. And I mean, you can do a mid season prune if you want to. So when you want to deadhead them, uh, you can cut the heads back later on once they've finished flowering. And that can often, in many plants, such as this Napita, produce a, a second flush of flowers, which is obviously great for the insects because it means more nectar throughout the season. So a lot of plants you can encourage uh, to regrow. And I will be doing another video on the best ways uh, and when to prune a buddleia. If some of you have seen the buddleia video on the channel and the benefits that that has for wildlife. However, what about that? Completely different plant. Looks fantastic. Looks like something you would buy out of a garden centre. So yes, absolutely easy as pie. You can just see in the middle the dead stems that I've cut down to as low as you can in there. Don't worry too much about getting them right down to the ground, but as low as you possibly can. And that just encourages, like I say, this fresh growth. Gives them room to breathe and um, is really good for the plant. Last but not least, one more. Then I'll let you try some of this at home. You can see this is a salvia. Uh, I've lost the label on this one. I'm pretty sure it's a Caradonna. Um, and it's again a bit scraggly. You can see the old flowers and the seed heads on here. Uh, but again, it just wants a nice little prune right now to get it ready for the spring. So again, I'm just going in and going to cut back as hard as I can into the fresh growth without cutting the fresh growth, obviously. Um, don't worry if you cut one or two of the leaves. If, you know, these things are very, very good to rejuvenate. You can see it's got a lot of vigour. And with the central stems, you just have to kind of part the vegetation and get in, get in the middle and cut down as much as you can of those dead stems. Very therapeutic, actually. I've been doing this most of the afternoon. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> it's nice work being sat on a, sat on a fold out chair, just cutting back herbaceous perennials you can't really beat it very therapeutic and a nice way to end the day so there you go that is one time salvia raring to go now it looks again completely different and it, it just yeah gives these things a really good chance at getting going obviously remember to water your plants this time of year if you can with natural rain water because it can be pretty dry we've had some very warm temperatures of late around about uh, you know, 18, 19, 20 degrees, everything in here is needed water in almost daily. So uh, yeah, make sure they have a good drink if you are planting any pots of perennials in your garden. So thank you very much for watching guys. I hope that's given you a few hints and tips as to how you can cut back your herbaceous perennials, why and when you should do it. And uh, please, as always, if you've got any comments, drop them in the box below or drop them in the comment section below. I'll be sure to answer them as soon as possible thank you very much for watching stay tuned just tuned to the channel and i will be sure to bring you many videos on all the ways in which you can help wildlife in videos to come thanks for watching i'll see you soon